Hey guys, how we doing? Need to clean up again. Getting a little scruffy. NCMO, how are we doing, bud? James, good to see you, buddy. Trapper Sai, hello. Michael, good evening, sir. Yeah, it's about quarter to ten. Not terribly late. Probably late enough. Finally got some good rain today. Uh, matter of fact, parts of the state, uh, here it got kind of slick, but... Other parts of the state, man, we got hammered with snow. I was really surprised by that. There's a lot of snow. Pretty shocking. Jacob, how are we doing, buddy? So everybody's trapping beaver. How's your season going? That's kind of the, the big thing right now is that beaver market. Tomorrow morning, we're going to see how Fur Harvesters does on their uh, beaver sale. So that'll be pretty interesting. I'm kind of intrigued to see how that goes. I know it's definitely been slow on my end, that's for sure. Am I coming through all right? Seems like it's uh, kind of odd. Oh, cool, NCMO. That's awesome, man. Oh, thank you for doing that. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Michael Grant, what's up, buddy? Uh, Grant, um, the, uh, the raccoon bill passed the Ways and Means, and it is headed to Congress next week, I believe. Jeff Hale, how are we doing, sir? James, that's awesome, man. That's a really good average. Oh, left-handed. Man, they really devoured that thing then. Really, Michael? That's crazy. We've had a couple fires around here, but they've all been planned. They're all... Uh, it's that time of year and everybody's burning off CRP and whatnot. Wow, and CMO. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Uh, I finally got a smaller, not small, but probably a decent line for me out for Beaver uh, and had my first check the other day. So you guys just got to wait and see the, the footage when it comes out. But it was disappointing, but not um, 43 percent of my Beaver were 60 pounds or better, which I've never had happen. Jacob, they don't have babies during season, buddy. Wow, that's an awesome property in CMO. That'd be insane, man. That's cool. That's a really good property. I'm assuming it's a pretty good section. It's probably not something small then. Ah, there you go, James. Yeah, I get it, buddy. I get it. Um, yeah, we got... What do we have? Three weeks left? So I've got some plans if they work out for beaver season, but like I said, got our first decent line out and we've caught some on it. Number's not great, but my size is huge. 
And I am going to four in territory to get him. Cable guy, hunting stuff. How are we doing, guys? Past hunters in here. What's up, man? There you go, left-handed. Awesome. It's funny how that works out. Oh, wow, NCMO. You got 41 off that. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, 250 acres. That's that's a decent lot, but to get 41, man, I figured you're on something 1,000 plus. David, how we doing, sir? Cable guy, I'm getting by, buddy. I'm getting by. Um, like I said, got my first decent beaver line out and had a check on it. And wasn't what I wanted it to be, but uh, yeah, 43% of the beaver or 60 plus pounds. I will take that. Absolutely left-handed. I had a uh, one guy, and that's the thing, you never know with these farmers when they ask you, you never know really what they got. They have an idea of what they have, but some people just don't quite know what they have. Uh, farmer approached me on the road ditch and said, hey, I've, you know, you're trapping beaver. I got a great spot up here for you. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. He goes, just follow me up here a mile and I'll show you. I said, all right, sure. Follow him up there and there's an old, old beaver dam. Probably blew out early winter, late fall. Uh, and I was like, so you think you got him in here? Well, a guy caught 14 in here last fall. And then another guy caught two a couple weeks ago. But you can go up in here all the farther you want to catch them. And I'm like, yeah, there's not going to be anything left. <laughs> so you just never know. To the light side, Michael. Dan, how we doing, buddy? Good to see you. You had a 70? That's awesome, Michael. My biggest so far, uh, I actually waited just here a little bit ago, was right at 65. So, but I'll tell you what, the tail on this beaver is something, my big one. I've never seen a tail like that. I mean, my hand cannot span it. It's, it's something crazy. Hey, Tony, how we doing, buddy? Oh. Abe, so I believe it goes to Iowa Congress this week. Um, I just uh, actually got off the phone. Um, with Dean Fisher here a couple hours ago, talking about it a little more. Nice, Tony. Nice. Good deal. That's a big beaver, Dan. That's really big. Hey, Joe. How are we doing? NCMO, I've got one, maybe two that broke 70. Um, but I've had, I won't say a lot in the 60s, but a few. Michael, I had that 70-pounder last year, and he's getting put on the wall. That thing was massive. That was – I had that one, and then my biggest – I still can't remember if it was 72 or 76. I'm assuming it's probably 72, but that thing was just absolutely insane. But really, I don't have a whole lot of exceptionally large beaver. Uh, you know, I've had two break 70, but honestly, I've probably only got 10 or 12 ever in the sixties. So, Hey, Corey, Corey. Yeah. I, that's, that's, what's funny is, you know, these things look a lot heavier than they do. Um, so it's hard to get a good guesstimate, especially when they're wet too. You gotta let them dry out and see where they're at. Nice, Tony. Good for him. Good for him. But no, we finally finally are getting out there. It's short lived though, guys. It's a it's a two day check and and we're done. I got some local stuff planned. Uh, what what was really fascinating to me, um, and I just this kind of blew my mind. So we were trapping raccoons into February, right? 
Uh, our season got extended. I didn't go till the end of it, but you know we're trapping coons till middle of February. Uh, you guys won't remember the bridge, but there was a bridge where I had it was in the snow. I caught one, then I caught another one, and the other dog proof. And then next day I had a double. That creek had no beaver activity at all. I drove past it here probably two weeks ago. And there's chewings everywhere, randomly. You know, a month ago. There was nothing, no sign at all. So for that to uh, to happen that quick makes me realize some of these cricks I'm overlooking, maybe I should give them a second chance. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, cool, Dan. That would be neat. That would be neat. Yeah, Tony, I'll be there, buddy. I will definitely be there. Hey, Ty, how we doing, bud? But I got some local stuff I'm going to hit yet, like I said. Uh, just, there's not the beaver here. You know, our water level is so low, it's just tough. Wow. Encimo, that's a, that's a good day, buddy. That's a really good day. Oh, cool, Dan. That's awesome. Purgatory. How are we doing, my man? Tony, it is July 25th, 6th, and 7th. I know that because I just had to buy a week of vacation to attend that event. And I'm still trying to figure out the details on it because my anniversary is Wednesday the 24th. So, yeah, this is 25th, 26th, and 27th. My anniversary is 24th, so it's the night before. So, Right, Corey, exactly. I'd be the same way, buddy. I'd be the exact same way. NCMO, I, wanna, I haven't done it yet because I haven't got to any of my big bridges, but what I want to do is just tie a rope to the top of the bridge if I have one, lower it down, and then I can stand from the top and just winch it up. Oh, yeah, Tony. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got you. I'll be there. I've got the first demo at the Nationals, so <sighs> hopefully I can sweet talk the wife into not waiting until she goes to bed Wednesday night on her anniversary to drive up there because that would make for a long day, especially once we get into the uh, rum and Pepsi by noon because you know what happens. It's Nationals. You, you have to. That's what you do. <laughs> uh, Chad, I don't know about a live trap specifically designed for them. Your smaller ones would. Um, they got the colony traps, which I'm sure you've heard of, but I don't know about a live trap specifically for muskrat. I'd assume a squirrel trap would work, though. Um, some a little smaller, I don't know what they are, six by eights maybe, something like that. I would assume. It'd be tough, though, because that means you're trapping on dry land. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, NCMO, absolutely. Chad, I'm guessing this is an ADC job. I'm guessing. My opinion, situation like that, I'd walk away. That's just me. Um, one thing I've learned... When I was doing some animal damage control stuff, which I pretty much quit doing it because I just don't have the time to. Uh, jobs like that aren't worth the hassle, in my opinion, unless they're paying really well, and most of them aren't. So, uh, for those that just, it wasn't worth it for me personally.
my wife has a friend over whose daughter is my daughter's best friend. So you can hear them party in the background. The pasture at your church on private pond. Oh, Chad, boy, you're kind of morally obligated to try that then, but. I don't know on that one, man. Uh, you can try it, but I, I don't think there's a lot of success with a live trap for muskrats. I just don't. Yeah, I, I don't think your success rate of catching. If he sees a muskrat in his pond, chances are he has 10. Right, Chad. Yeah, that's. I'm assuming you're doing it out of the kindness of your heart, but that's that's a tall order, man. Even trying to eliminate muskrats out of a pond, period, is a tall order, in my opinion. Uh, nonetheless, trying to do it with live traps, man, you're... I, I don't think it's a realistic request, um, in my opinion. Uh, and this probably... I don't even know if this would be legal or not necessarily, so don't quote me on it, but... I think you'd almost be better off with colony traps in the runs that are up above water enough that they can breathe. You ca yeah, kind of like what Corey said. But yeah, my opinion, I'd walk away from that. Uh, even with it being the pastor, uh, oof, that's... Boy, he better be paying a pretty good penny for it otherwise. Yeah, and CMO, that's the only thing I could think of is colony traps and runs that are shallow, but I don't know. That that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. If you're going to try it, I'd make him pay well. Pasture or not, I don't care. <laughs> All right, Jeff, that's a good point. Yeah, okay. Put the entrance in the water. Yeah, Hunter stuff, I'd agree. Um, Chad, yeah, I'll put it on here because uh, we got 40 people. So I called um, Dean Fisher, uh, and my topic of discussion today with him was to – so they're trying to promote fur buyers with this bounty system as we got coming. Um, they're, they're dropping all the, the Iowa fur buyer license to $50. Um, and it is public knowledge that they are trying to amend. Hold on. Let me get the, the verbiage right on this. They're trying to amend this bill so that fur buyers can still participate in the tail bounty. Let me find it here, fellas. Just give me a second. Hey, uh, they want to amend it with. Fur dealers can turn in tails they have harvested themselves personally. So here in Iowa, we have a lot of. They're fur buyers, but they're not the big buyers that you think of. Um, you know, you get a guy that's a taxidermist, has a license. You get a guy that, that buys 200 coon or something if the market's good or he has a select market. Some of these these lower-end guys, they're not the Groenwolds, uh, Drew Lowe, Rick Anderson. They're not the, the big guys that are really selling a lot of stuff. So this will make it so those guys will still can get a license and still participate in this bounty. Um, so they're going to – they're looking at lowering – all the licensing to buy fur to $50.
which is huge because right now it's right at 300 or just shy of it. Um, very, it's up there. It's, it's high. Uh, so my discussion with him was, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with it, that they have a uh, reciprocate policy with states. So, for an example, Minnesota years ago during the fur boom decided no one's coming to our state to trap our animals. It's for our residents only. Therefore, Iowa decided we can't come up there to trap your stuff. You're not coming down here to trap our stuff. So no Minnesota resident can trap Iowa. Someone from Missouri can. But since Minnesota doesn't allow anybody, and there's a few other states doing this too, Minnesota doesn't, so therefore they can't trap down here. With that also, they made that with fur buying. So no Minnesota fur buyer could buy in Iowa. No Iowa fur buyer could buy in Minnesota. The What I talked to Dean about was eliminating the fur buying aspect of it. Um, do away with that. You've got two big fur buyers in Minnesota, um, Carlson and Webkey. And I would assume that they would love to have the opportunity to buy Iowa fur more than just what the Iowa fur gets drove up to them and bought in their state. So uh, it allows them, if they want to, to come here, you know, give more competition uh, and things like that. So reciprocity. Thank you, James. Yeah. Um, I hate that word. I can't say it well. But yeah, so so with that being said, it's there's a lot of things to this bill. Um, there's a lot of pushback with it, believe it or not, with trappers. Um, and, and some of these guys make some really good points of concerns. Uh, but we do have a few things moving forward that are really good. Um, the disabled vets, it is moving through fairly unflawed where disabled vets can get a lifetime trapping license, just like they can a hunting license. And the uh, under 16 year old trapping license, they do not need a license if they're with a licensed adult, just similar to hunting and everything else. So um, that's pretty good. I, I'm hopefully those things keep moving forward. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like those are almost a slam dunk, knock on wood. Hey, Quentin, how are we doing? Man, I said a lot there. No response. Did I buff out? Okay, James, so so what's your honest opinion with that? Are you concerned? Do you feel non-residents will come in and, and, and swoop things up? I didn't know you couldn't have non-residents there before. Quentin, I'm doing terrible, buddy. I'm doing terrible. Okay, Earl. Yeah, just I said a lot there and nothing happened. But, um, no, there are some good concerns with this bill. Uh, you know, the funding, where it's coming from, um, if there's even going to be funding available. Uh, you know, there's a lot to the cheating. How do we minimize cheating? We've heard rumors, you know, since this bill's not even passed yet, but it's proceeding people already cutting off tails and storing them. Um, matter of fact, I've seen pictures of it already. So how do we minimize that? How do we, you know, when whatever funds we do have when they run out, how do we let people know? Um, I'm hoping, um, and that's another topic I need to talk to with Dean, is that actually I'd probably be more with the DNR, um, call Vince and talk to him, of get an updated account kind of kind of like the uh the antlerless doe quotas that we have so it's updated every time you know the dnr turns in tails so we know how much funds is on in there you don't want to be sitting there waiting until december 30th with 700 tails to turn in and find out that the bounty's gone you know it's all used up um so a lot of things to work through um and I won't lie, it's hard for me not to be biased because this is something that would drastically impact me. Um, 
drastically impact me. So I don't know, Chad, if they're signing up for that or not. Um, I hope they do. Uh, that's something I might reach out to Fisher on uh, Monday morning and talk to him. But there's several good ideas. I don't know if that ever actually went up the chain to them. Um, you know, there's several guys he's working with with this. And I, I just, this is that reciprocity thing for fur buyers is one thing I want to talk to him about. But for the most part, Bruce Rhodes is leading the charge on this. I'm um, just kind of, you know, I talked to him a couple times and did the interview with him, but uh, not much. Hey, Earl, how are we doing, buddy? Quentin, I don't think it's going to be like that. I, I don't think it's going to be like that. You know, I, I don't – there's so many things to iron out in this. Um, and it's getting a lot of pushback, actually, from Iowa Trappers. And some very, very good comments on there that are concerns that we need to address. But I think my understanding now is we just got to get the legislation in line so that we can figure out the funding and figure out the – the house, you know, if that makes sense. Um, it's, I really don't know how else to put it without the, the legislative side set in stone. Then we can, it's, I guess the way, best way to put it is like, you got to pour the foundation and that foundation can sit there as long as you want before you put the house on it, you know, but you're not going to build that house without the foundation. So, um, you know, maybe this is something that they decide, you know what, we're going to put $2,000 in it and it'll be gone by 8.30 on Sunday morning, November 5th. <laughs> uh, we just don't know, but you got to get the, the law in place before it even happens. So, um, Quentin, no. So that's the thing. Uh, this is going to be set up the funding, especially we don't know about. But it's going to be set up for the option of it. So basically, going forward, if this passes, the program will always be there. They may decide one year, we need no funding. Maybe one year, it's a million dollars. You know, it just, but you got to get the, the foundation to it first. So thanks, Purgatory. Yeah, Quentin, and that's the thing. You know, nobody nobody really knows. Um, you know, it, who knows, uh, when this first came out, I was hundred percent for it. Now I'm for it, but I have a lot more concerns than I did. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, nobody really knows, but one thing for sure is if we don't get it, the foundation in there, nothing will happen anyway. So, um, I say get the foundation in there. And then if they just say there's no funding or no no available funds, whatever, that's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, Walker, I know. Uh, <clears throat> it's just, who knows? Uh, nobody really knows. But um, I did see uh, yesterday was the Iowa Trapper Association um, breakfast at the State House. So that was pretty cool. Um, you know, they... Uh, they do breakfast down in the basement of the state house, I believe, um, with legislators. I actually show some pictures on here. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, legislators taking pictures with fur products and, and things like that. It was pretty neat. It was really neat. How much have you had to drink? <laughs> it looks nice. Katie told me to really? bring it. <laughs> you want me to leave it? No. <laughs> Some picture to Katie. <laughs> you want me to keep this one's cocoa this one's rotisserie if you don't get it off my head no 
Can you come back? It's happy when you the girls think so too. Get it off my head. No. You wanna come? <laughs> Katie was hoping it would poo on you. <laughs> <laughs> it did not poop, no. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, hot and stuff, that's a very big possibility. Cable guy, that's something that's been brought up internally, so. Corey, I've seen my wife drink probably 20 times in my life in, in eight years. So Walker, I see him being poached, I guess. Um, you know, the tails being cut off. That wouldn't bother me as much, but chances are they're shooting them in the skull, which therefore I lose money there too. So it's going to be a double hit for me. All right, James, you take care, buddy. Hey, don't tread on me. What's up, bud? NCML? Yeah, she's got a whole bunch of chickens and I don't know. Frustrating. But no, uh, we'll see what happens with this. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll just wait and see. That's not good. Don't tread on me, Quentin. My best suggestion, man, is accept it, move on. Uh, I know it sucks and it happens, but you got to move on. I don't think so, Chad, because they can turn that tail in for a bounty. They don't want to skin anything. Um, if they're stealing something, they don't want to work, you know. And I could see them pulling up, popping it, cutting it off, and moving on. Um, you know, they find four of them. Guess what? They got a case of beer for the night. So take care, bud. Yeah, don't tread on me. That's probably a little low. Um, yeah, especially with hopefully Coon becoming a little better. Yeah, Quentin, that's tough, man. That's really tough. I get it. I get it. But, yeah, I mean, see, back in 2013, I didn't trap in the real fur boom, but I was around in 2013 when the fur market went up. And, oh, man, I had – I was actually telling one of my Snapchat groups this earlier that I had skinned raccoons put back in traps. So, yeah, that – don't tread on me. It seems to be the average that I've heard about between that five and six for green. But yeah, as far as this bounty goes, I believe it's going through this week. Um, let me double check. Yep, they were told next week it's a bill available for the floor in the uh, Iowa Congress. So, oh, nice. Hopefully, it's good steak. Nice, Clinton.
Yep. People would skin them and put them right back in the trap just to mess with me. Nice, nice. But right now we're in the process of trying to finish fur, trying to beaver trap all before bugs get here because beetles are going to be here before we know it. And that's a bad deal. Very bad deal. So kind of scary. Those beetles can come in and just wipe out everything you've done if you're not careful. Yeah, they left the carcass. Oh, nice, Quentin. All right, buddy. You take care, bud. Hey, V8. How we doing, bud? Yeah, don't tread on me. It's going to make it pretty... A lot more, not competition in a way, but you're going to have a lot more issues in the road ditches like what me and Next Gen do. Um, you know, like I said, I've got my concerns, but to me, it's part of it. Well, that's the thing, though. It's just, I mean, I lose literally 30 to 50 traps a year. Most half of it's probably due to mowers, but the other half, yeah, people are just stealing stuff. Yeah, exactly, Tony. 2013 was the year to do it. Oh, nice, Lexi. I know we got a uh, nothing. Maybe I won't say it because maybe it's not supposed to be said. <laughs> Hey, Teddy, how we doing, buddy? Tina, what's up? We're just chatting a little bit. Um, trying to do some beaver trapping, talking about this raccoon bounty bill coming through. and Oh, okay, Lexi. Yeah, then we got a bear coming your way. So My wife ordered boxes to ship them in to get a lower shipping rate, so then they'll be headed your way. I don't know if it was a surprise or not. So, I don't know what they're doing. Oh. It's crazy, though. This, this beaver line I'm on has already got me thinking about raccoon trapping for next year. Uh, the location... No catch circles at all. Just some phenomenal area. It's just insane. Just gets me all pumped up. I wish we had cricks like this, you know, over home, but we don't. <laughs> Lexi, she's not sharing, huh? I'll tell both of them hi for me. Yeah, she's making another bobcat bear. Not today, obviously, but she's working on one. Yep, not going to change anything, Chad. That's the world. I mean, if someone's going to lie or cheat, they're going to do it regardless of what they're doing. Where's what at, NCMO? I'm lost. What are we talking about? Yeah. 
Man, I'm tired. Been a long week. I suppose, guys. Uh, just want to stop on and say hi. Been a while. Uh, hopefully running beaver traps on Monday. And we're pulling them, so... We just did two checks. Yeah, Chad, I couldn't tell you either, buddy. Oh, yeah. It's him. I gotcha. No, we uh we put some miles on the truck. We put some miles on the truck, so. Brad, how are we doing, bud? We're just getting ready to bail out of here, boss. Hopefully everything's going well for you. You're probably getting busy with ADC jobs right now. Yeah, don't try to I mean now if this does pass, all you gotta do is cut the tail off and you got five on that, so. Otter, you're bailing in here right when I'm bailing out, buddy. No, my wife's friend is leaving, I believe, so. Yeah, hunting stuff, that's because I'm inside. Um, when I'm on my phone, that's when we get hit with all the BS. <coughs> so. Anyway, guys, we're going to bail out of here. I got to go to work tomorrow. Um, I got some SD cards to hopefully get some... Uh, uh, Trap Association video is coming out soon, um, which would be nice. Been a couple weeks since we got one of them out, so. But uh, we'll see what we can come up with on that. So if you're not subscribed to that, please check it out, the Iowa Trapper Association YouTube channel. Um, kind of big variety of stuff over there, so. Man, don't tread on me. It depends how you market your stuff, buddy. Um if this does pass, I'm going to be flirting with the $20 bill per coon. So pretty hard for me to not be biased with it. Um, but there's also some big concerns with it too. You know, like I said, um, a lot of stuff I didn't think about that did get brought up to my attention that we got to figure out. So we will see. But anyway, we're out of here, guys. Y'all take care and we'll catch you next time.